Okay, so I've been recently dealing with uh, oversampled over systems. And I've been looking at uh, analog dithering uh, techniques in oversampled systems. And I just wanted to go back to the basics and show a quick uh, demo or quick demonstrations of an oversampled system with an injected analog analog dither. So I'll just start from here. I've drawn a diagram of an ideal two-bit uh, quantizer and an analog adder uh, next to uh, next to it. So X is the signal of conversion or the signal that we want to convert. And D is the random noise that we inject into the system, uh, which is then converted to 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 digital domain. So the whole idea of dithering in oversampled systems is that you can gain a lot by oversampling, adding noise to the signal, uh, and then when you low-pass filter the signal, uh, you would gain more quantization steps or increase the resolution of the whole system by uh, w with the help of noise uh, i mean to to be more clear i will i have a small example here of uh two cases so in case one if we have an ideal quantizer uh we have if we feed in a sine wave into it without any noise ideal system at the output what we get is uh, this uh, waveform well it's two bits we have four quantization levels uh, so no, no matter how many times we oversample this signal we would always get um, we would always get the same number the, the same result uh, even if we uh, average out uh, and the idea of uh, analog dithering is if if one adds a small amount of noise uh, into the system, so if it's added on top of the sine wave, and if you if you quantize this back and c convert it back, uh, then you would get this kind of behavior, which, uh, of course, because of the noise and multiple samples, it would it would follow the noise. But still, if you uh, if you low pass filter it. Uh, and if the noise is within one least significant bit and it well it also has to be I mean there's lots of theories uh, behind it there's a lot more to it uh, I will post in or put in some links below to two very good papers uh, discussing dithering techniques but this noise noise source does not uh, necessarily need to be uh, uniform could be Gaussian could be could be blue noise could have a different probability density function triangular I won't go into details you have the links below but if one low pass filters uh, the, the the converted or the quantized value then we can get a finer quanti quant quantized step of course this is provided that the hardware that we have allows this uh, so which means that the word length of our low pass filter has to be much much wider than than these two bits that we we have here. Of course, we want to increase the quantization steps. Uh, and yeah, before before moving over to the demo, there's another uh, subtractive or digital subtractive dithering technique, which I won't go into details here. But you will see the links, which can provide you even more uh, efficiency. Uh, if 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 this is followed, I mean, there's some difficulties in implementing both, but uh, this should be a short video. So what I have here, uh, I've hooked up a simple two-bit flash ADC. So I've used four comparators. Uh, it's TL074 that I used uh, in this setup, and I've used the resistive ladder for the reference voltages of the flash converter. So I'm using a 15 volt. Uh, input power supply, so we get about just about three volt, uh, three volts of LSB per per LSB, and the output, of course, is uh, thermometer coded. So I I do not have a thermometer to binary encoder in in this setup. So here is uh, here is how it the whole setup is just the TLO 74 with a bunch of resistors, and it's all hooked up together. Uh, the 
input sine wave source. I use one RC uh, function generator. I'm feeding in a fairly low frequency or 42 hertz uh, sine wave. Now for the dither source, ideally I should use a white noise uh, generator, a white noise source. Unfortunately, one day a guy came uh, in the lab and well, took all the good equipment. So took it away from us. Yeah, he took, took it, away it away from us. So. What, like I, what I'm trying to do, what I'm using here is a second generator which uh, makes a square wave with the frequency of, uh, let's see, uh, 340 kilohertz uh, square wave, so it's fairly mu mu much higher frequency than, than the one that we are uh, feeding in. So ideally this shouldn't be done this way, but I think it would still show the basic principle or the basic idea. So currently we can have a look at a non dithered system, uh, which if we neglect thermo thermal noise, metastip comparator, metastability, all things like that, we can treat this as an ideal system. So you have the uh, yellow waveform, which is the input sine wave, and you have these all four uh, thermometer coded bits d0 d1 d2 d3 which are the outputs of the of the flash adc and we can see that it pretty much behaves in the same way as as i draw it uh, draw it before so we have sharp four steps now if i add i'm capacitively coupling the dithering generator or this noise source square wave noise to to the input of the ADC, so I'll just connect, connect it here. Right, so we can instantaneously see what happens. Now we can, okay, let's look, let's initially look at the sine wave. Uh, so we can see the square wave on top of the sine wave, which, well, once again, it should be a random noise source, but it still shows, shows the effect. Uh, besides, if it's a square square wave, uh, it would give lots of uh, high frequency terms uh, anyway. Uh, and here is the result: we have fluctuation in the LSBs and the MSBs. So, I'll just zoom in the LSBs. Um, so, if one takes a certain window of say five samples or ten samples and averages them out for instance here I'm not sure uh, but you would probably end up having 1.25 uh, or 1.75 or 1.5 it also depends on your on the resolution of your low bus uh, uh, filter so it's pretty much you can, can observe the same the same behavior for the rest of the bits you can see here uh, and the MSB uh, going down. Now, as one thing, uh, I have used. So, if we have a look at the amplitude of the dither, I've used just about three volts uh, amplitude for the dither. And if I increase this over three volts, which now becomes more than one LSB, <coughs> even even furthermore, you can see that in the end, just have a look here uh, while I'm increasing, you end up just fluctuating lots of not only one LSB but many bits and you end up injecting further more noise uh, into the system so it's important to know that you should be injecting less than an LSB so if I reduce this below 3 volts you end up without without any noise but yeah, just to summarize I, I was not able to uh, extract the information from the scope and low pass filter in MATLAB because we had problems with uh, with the drivers for Linux for this uh, scope but uh, yeah the idea was to just give a very brief live view demo of uh, dithering so I'll post in links below